Come in with a good thumbnail at the start. Hey guys, it's <laughs> been a it's been a moment since uh, we put some really fun stuff online. Uh, and again, I have my single favorite person in the entire world, in the wine and spirits world. He's somewhere in the room. Um, Patrick from Winebow. How's it going? Um, he's brought us some incredible stuff from the way eastern worlds. Um, we're going to talk about a really interesting um, liquor, liqueur, whiskey, something um, that outsells everything on this planet in the spirit world. So, Patrick, thank you for coming as always. And thank you for having me. Happy almost Chinese New Year. Happy almost Lunar New Year. Lunar New Year. There you go. By the way, what are you? You're a I, I, uh, I was born in the year of the horse. Ah, so was I. Look at that. Two horses. Two horses in a row. Can you proof see us in Speedos? There you go. We'll be at Miami next week. <laughs> Um, so this year is the year of the tiger, Le Tigre. So if you guys were born, you were born this year in the year of the tiger. We'll be celebrating with this wonderful drink called... Baijo. Baijo. Not Joe Baijo, <laughs> uh, but Baijo. <laughs> we're a little silly today. That's what we do here. We've had a little of a start. So talk to me. What is it? What's it about? So, what do we do here? So Baijo is... Uh, from China, uh, it is the single most consumed spirit in the world. Uh, vodka and whiskey combined don't even catch up to the numbers that Baijiu does. Uh, but predominantly, it's it's relatively unknown in the U.S. So, in your market, how many people that you know of, like in New York State, carry this as a regular supply, other than us at our store? So, so I work in the Hudson Valley, and I, and it certainly is a niche market. Okay. Um, you know, stores that you know care about carrying uh, cool things um, certainly uh, like to have at least one Baijo, but for the most part, it's you know matched with you know what consumers are going after, and frankly, a lot of. People probably have never even heard of Baijo in America, um, or if they have, they're you know very unacquainted with it. So uh, I'm glad we get to do this kind of video and hopefully get more people get buying some people it. on there. Yeah. So this is the Ming River, obviously a a location in China named after a specific location, um, and Baijo itself for me is, is um, a little interesting to learn about because is it a whiskey? Is it a grain neutral spirit? Is it a a vodka, like right. what can we technically call this? So if you go to the TTB or the wonderful federal agency that allows us to give us the nomenclature, the naming of this, do we just call this East Asian hooch? So, <laughs> I mean, it's like, what do we call it? It's, it's, it's Asian hooch, so, so it's like in, we call moonshine hooch. It's, it's in the distilled spirit category, just the way that we would, you know, associate vodka or gin or whiskey or tequila or rum or brandy, any of those things. Uh, Baijo is, is on equal footing with all of those categories. Within Baijo, there's definitely tons of subcategories that are based off of fragrance and style, all the way from the flowery, lighter, sweeter styles uh, like Ming River, all the way to styles that are more similar to saucy styles, uh, which are, you know, very, you know, somewhat odd, go well with pickled foods, uh, but are very, very unique. Um, and it is, you know, it's it can be distilled from a lot of things, most predominantly sorghum. Um, sorghum? Sorghum, yes. Sassy grass? A little sassy grass. Ooh. <laughs> That has got a really interesting nose. Yeah, I love this wow. one. Uh, on the on the nose, there's the, almost this like pink bubble gum note that it's I pure, get. It's pure. Like it's like it's really like this fun like pink candied flowery thing. So for old people like me, this smells like literally the good old uh, rock candy, the pink bubble gum rock candy that explodes in your mouth. Yeah. It's incredible. There's a sweet nose to it. The palate though, totally different. The palate way more savory, way more peppery. Really interesting. So this, uh, as opposed to classic whiskeys and stuff like that, when they make this, uh, do you know if this is column stilled, pot stilled? I mean, I know there's a whole funky thing with yeast versus the mold versus whatever. Right. So, well, with the yeast, I mean, the yeast is really the big story here with uh, Baijiao. Um, they, they use what they call Q. Uh, which is, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically their way of incorporating yeast into the fermentation process. And the way you can take this, you know, distilled spirit, which is predominantly sorghum, but they can also use rice, they can also use barley, um, 
the big flavor differential is is the fermentation method, the 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 yeast the Q introduction that gives it these totally profoundly different flavors baijiu to baijiu. Um, so so that is the big element of the fermentation process, which changes the flavor for these guys. Well, here's this to, is very chemistry driven. <laughs> here's, to, here's to putting a brand new taste in my mouth for the Lunar New Year. Generally, traditionally, we would be uh, cheersing the host for having me over here. Exactly, and bringing some red paper money. Wow. See how barnyardy it gets on the back? Like, it's like this peppery. This is pepper. Hay. Uh, pepper, bone dry. Yeah, yeah. Wow. There's some peroxide nest to this. There's some. The pyrazines, those wonderful like green pepper notes, and weird. Do you, do you get that hay note though? Like, yeah. I, like it's like there's a part of this that's like a little barnyardy. It's, um, it's funky. Yeah, if you if you like chewing on a sorghum grass or a hay stick, and you're like, hey partner. Yeah. You get you get some. It's actually really nice. Yeah, it's it's tasty. It's definitely an acquired like taste. I'm not. I I I. I Certainly for the American palate that's not used to this, uh, it takes a little bit of growing on you. It's interesting, but it can. You know what this reminds me of on the back end? Um, the wafting out and everything. This reminds me of cachaça. Yeah, I can see that. It's, a... it's, it's got some interesting green notes of the cachaça. <laughs> right. When you drink it by yourself as opposed to a caparina. Yeah. It's really interesting. And that makes sense. Kind of the sorghum versus the, you know, raw sugar cane element to it. The... Sorghum to non-sorghum to sorghum to whatever. So this is uh, used to toast in the New Year's and stuff like that, the Lunar New Year. What do you want to like? Like, can you make fun cocktails with this? Like, can you? Oh yeah. Like, if you, if you, let's say we don't even have a recipe in front of us, what would you look like? Would you make a plan of company with this or? So so yeah. A Negroni. I mean, so or? one of my favorite, like um, another kind of you know Asian spirit that's that's somewhat popular is sochu, and one of my favorite so true. Yeah, so true. So true. So, it's so true. It's so true. God, we got puns today. I love it. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, one of my favorite things to do is just to take a little lime juice, lemon juice, seltzer, and some of this super refreshing drink. It'll sneak up on you, but it's a great kind of like day after like uh, the pair nice of the dog. The proof is. Uh, it's pretty sturdy. Uh, it's that is sturdy. 90, 90 proof. Wow. So 90 proof. It'll kick you in the teeth a little bit. Um, uh, but, but outside of just kind of that nice little, little refresher with lemon juice, lime juice, seltzer, and this, um, this is a really cool variation for a lot of, you know, your light spirits. So you can make a really cool, like, Moscow mule with this. Mm. Um, you can, it, it pairs well with all types all of citrus. Beer. So yeah. you get a little grapefruit juice, a little orange juice. You know, you can make a cool, like, margarita variation with this. I would like to make a fun sweet drink out of this. Like one of those, like, blue Hawaiians or something really fun where you're using... With all the umbrellas. Yeah, and, and, we, and just, you know, call... I, I would like... This really needs to be in the new Idris Elba James Bond flick, mm -hmm. where like the enemy is going to be like coming out of Russia via China, yeah, and it's all centered around Baiju, and the evil guy could be like a, a Baiju cocktail mixologist. I <laughs> and this is like really cool, but he makes poisons out of them, and since it's the number one drank thing, he like poison everybody. I think that every Baiju distillery was like with you on that until you're like no yeah. it's like oh and you, it's all poison or, or we could do James Bond <laughs> against like he could do the scotch versus bijou because this has got some earthiness like some of the peatiness from scotch yeah yeah, yeah. There, there's some certainly interesting notes on there I think that there's a lot of things in this that different spirit drinkers in America could gravitate towards it's just a new introduction and new things are sometimes scary um but this is this grows on you like even every I'm every sip on this. i'm i'm a little happier i would like to yeah like so for an absinthe drinker i think you guys might like this too because it's got some of that really weird esoteric geekiness that that has <clears throat> wow it's actually making my voice go away i wonder if this one has poison in it <laughs> See, that's it. There we go. I've just been roofied with some baijiu. Um, no, this is some really good stuff. So, uh, other than cocktails and stuff like this, would this be fun to um, just like make a play on, like uh, a mixing, like in an aperitif? Yeah, Could absolutely. You, you know, uh, a welcoming drink, a fun after dinner cocktail. Hundred percent. And I mean, drinking it straight is the traditional way of doing it, but this can be incorporated. The uh, I I have a a cocktail bar down in Warwick that just did for um, New Year's Eve 
you know, our 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 New, our, our New Year's Eve, the real New Year's. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> the younger it's the younger New Year. I'm just like we're the like fresh New Year. We're 2022. I think they're the 11, Gregorian calendar. <laughs> they're at eleven thousand, twelve million, or something like that. Um, but they just did for their uh, you know aperitif welcome cocktail. They did a bijou and champagne wow, uh, nice. spritzer. So that was that was very cool. So instead and, of a French 57, is it? Yeah, a Sichuan 57. We can do a Sichuan. Szechuan, yeah, something. I don't know how to say fifty-seven in Cantonese or Szechuan. Do you? Uh, no, I know. We'll I, I missed that. that, that class. I'll place it somewhere in one of the blips or something like that. It'll be kind of fun. <laughs> you know, we'll probably have some really interesting. Uh, oh, we can just do different graphics. Yeah, and for the Chinese. Like, can you just like like if I do that, you can just like put something exactly. in there. Oh, so this cool. is buys you, and then we'll put a number in there. <laughs> and you guys will be watching us like you guys are having too much fun. When can we do a video with you? It is about drinking, having fun, just really wonderful, jovial fun. Yeah. Um, the reason I love having Patrick come with us, me and my many personalities, I always say us, is because he knows a lot. If he doesn't know it, he plays around with it and gets to understand it. But the knowledge that you get and understanding that you really can't expand your worldliness unless you try everything on the planet. There's so many cocktails, so many wines, so many liquors, liqueurs, spirits, vast out there. There's no wrong way to drink them. Enjoy them. Have fun. Try them. Come on in. Check out some Ming River Baijiu. If you can't get in to get some, ask your local liquor store. Do they sell Baijiu? I will spell it on the screen because it doesn't sound like it says. Um, maybe we can make a um, electro, you know, college cocktail called the Joe Baijiu. Oh, that would be definitely very political. Yeah, let's, we, let's... we could stir a <laughs> lot of shit. I mean, like, we can stir a lot of stuff up. <laughs> Just think of all the different things we can do with the Baijudin administration. Well, just a just a quick thing too, just historically on this, when we're dealing with you know spirits dating back to China, I mean, you you have discovery of alcohol in China dating back to the Neolithic period. Um, what does that mean? Uh, we're going way back. We are. We are. They are, they, are, they are finding alcohol uh, remnants uh, in archaeological digs dating back. Um, you know, in in some ways, pre major civilization. Um, are they like in classic M4 or are they just finding old they, they have and they, they have absolutely found in, in M4. No, it's not normally coming into the wine boat boxes. <laughs> it's not like finding a galleon over in the Atlantic Ocean with like bottles that have been sitting there since 1600. From Carl these are Rossi. Going, these are going way back. Way, way back. This is right after the Velociraptors period. But, but we had we had distilled spirits in China dating yeah. back to the Han Dynasty. So that's uh, you know 200 BC. Yeah. Um, we have uh, Baijiu. Kind of rearing its head in the in the Tang Dynasty, uh, uh, six hundred common era. Um, so so this you know we've we've had this specific spirit uh, you know for for well over fifteen hundred years. Wow! And again, it's the number one sold spirit around the world, outselling everything else about four billion bottles a year. And that's because there's a lot of drinkers in the world. Yes. Yeah, it eclipses Jack Daniels by a thousandfold, maybe. It's, it's really interesting. So come on down, try some, email us, talk to us, let us know, you know, you learned something today, and uh, let us know how you liked it. But Cheers. don't forget, February 1st, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Here's to the horses. <laughs>